I guess we are just waiting for some more people to come in. And I'm just going to go ahead and start. This is the premiere 2020 of uh, film and digital media. Um, my name is uh, Daniel Beard. I'm a professor here uh, in the film and digital media department. I teach classes in um, uh, set management, pre-production, lighting and cinematography, and, uh, and some practicum classes. Uh, this, I've got like 15 minutes to, to power through this, so I am going to do it as quickly as possible. Again, this is the Department of Film and Digital Media. Now, uh, we have our, our FDM degree program is a Bachelor's of Arts, and it's uh, 124 hours uh, total, 36 um, is actual major uh, classes. Uh, we have 18 required courses and 18 electives. Out of those 18 electives, you can, um, we have some opportunities for internships, in six hours of internship, as well as six hours of independent study, um, something that uh, a student wants that's uh, kind of uh, unique or different. Um, and then we also have complementary degrees, which is a uh, kind of a hybrid between two departments. So communication specialists are the communication department and the film and digital media department and students will take courses in both of those uh, departments. Uh, the same goes with media management and that has to do with ma uh, business management as, and, and FDM. So it's a hybrid between those two. Uh, if you are looking for a minor in film and digital media, we offer an 18 hour, uh, um, basically 18 hours and you get a, a minor. Now, if you want FDM to be your uh, major, but you're also interested in, in a minor, uh, we recommend um, corporate communication and media management. Those two are, especially on the business side of the film industry um, and media industry uh, as a whole, those are uh, good complementary uh, minors to have. So the next one is we wanna talk about the areas of concentration. In terms of our concentration, we have three, their production, technology studies, uh, research and media effects. Here are some of our department resources. We have a full production studio, editing labs, color labs, audio suites, uh, computer labs, video game labs, um, professional cinema cameras and gear. We've got a lot of gear. Uh, um, AR, VR, AR gear. Uh, we have, you know, 360 um, cameras, the whole shebang there. And then uh, we also have smart classrooms and uh, a lounge, which um, not everybody has, um, I kind of found out. So that's kind of unique. Here in, uh, for production, here are some of the classes that we have. Um, I would love to go over all of these classes and what they do, but unfortunately we don't have a lot of time. Um, but if you have any questions about that, uh, feel free to ask afterwards. And uh, one of the unique things that we also do is, are workshops, and we usually do them either in the mini semester or during the summer session. And we, what we do is we hire a bunch of industry professionals to be like the cinematographers, uh, professional actors, audio people, and they work alongside the students. And it is a class, so they do get credit for it. Um, but they will work and learn from industry professionals, but also build up their network of uh, people that they know uh, in, in the industry. Uh, and the result is uh, films. And so for example, Blur Circle uh, was a, um, is a distributed film that you can watch on Amazon. So uh, it it's kind of uh, um, cool for a student to be able to say, hey, I worked on that film and, um, and can be able to, to show it to pretty much anybody. Uh, here are some uh, shots of uh, different productions that we've done over the years um, that students have been working with, again, uh, the professionals. And then these are some of the reviews, but also some of the uh, premieres that uh, we've had that students have the opportunity to go to when they uh, get into the uh, film festivals, all of the different film festivals that they have. So, um, so we have... Uh, the uh, Man's Chinese Theater in LA, 
at the top here. And then uh, down here is the Austin Film Festival, uh, a little closer. So, so um, people could uh, actually get there um, a little easier from, from Waco. In addition to that, we have our Black Glasses Film Festival. And the Black Glasses is our student film festival, which uh, is generally hosted down um, in, on Austin Avenue uh, in downtown Waco in the uh, historic um, Hippodrome, Waco Hippodrome. Um, however, this year they're, we're doing it like everybody else and we're gonna be online, but we're, we're very hopeful for next year to have a face-to-face. -face. So um, this is where basically we take all of the, uh, the best of the best of the short films that students have created over that last year um, and, um, and we show them uh, here in the in the film festival and give away prizes and it's a pretty cool cool opportunity to see your film on on the big screen. We have a lot of distinguished guests uh, speakers that come in and talk to us uh, again don't have a whole lot of time to go over who everybody is, um, but we have tons of producers cinematographers um, writers directors. Uh, and even actors, as you can see uh, on the left side here, we have Matthew Modine, who uh, was in Stranger Things. Um, some of us um, older people know, know him from um, uh, a whole bunch of other movies, uh, 80s movies. So, uh, so he has come to speak with us. And I wanna point out one other person real quick. Um, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but uh, in the middle, we have a gentleman with the blue shirt holding the microphone, and that's John Lee Hancock. He's directed um, films like The Blind Side, The Founder, Saving Mr. Banks, uh, as well as the new, newer Highwaymen uh, um, film that came out, I believe, last year. And... We also have um, uh, broadcast opportunities in uh, and the, um, we have broadcast opportunities for not just sports, but uh, also for you know, journalism. And some of those are Baylor Vision, which is our in-house kind of sports uh, broadcast. Uh, students are um, not hired, but they're, they're done. Uh, they, they take an internship and they work uh, with, and they record every sport. They film uh, all the sport and then they, um, uh, they cut it together, they make sizzle reels, uh, they, they produce a lot of media. So it's a really good opportunity to uh, kind of uh, get involved in, uh, in, in broadcast. And then we have the Lariat uh, TV News, which uh, the TV is, um, the Lariat TV News is our, the Lariat's our newspaper. And we have the, um, uh, basically they do an, an online show, uh, TV show, so you can get an opportunity to work um, as a broadcaster or a reporter, that kind of thing. And then of course, Fox, uh, excuse me, Fox uh, Sports Southwest also works with us to uh, create different, um, in like the football games, basketball games and things like that. Uh, they're kind of one of the major people that uh, um, uh, record those games or air those games. And so they're always asking for people to help out. Uh, so those are some opportunities for everybody. Um, now the next, you know, that's the production side. So now we're gonna talk about the uh, technology studies. Uh, the technology studies concentration really takes all the different technologies that we've had um, uh, coming through and, um, and basically studies how it, take, it tells a better story. So for example, um, I'll just briefly, I'll talk about the drone. Uh, before, if you wanted an aerial shot in any kind of film, you'd have to hire a helicopter, pay for the fuel, have your camera guy, have a camera mount. And it was, it was kind of dangerous uh, to do, but the, um, the drone has actually kind of changed the industry uh, because of that. And so, uh, has made it uh, a little bit easier for filming and, and a whole lot cheaper. So that's some of the things. And of course, we, we talk about green screen as well as AR and VR. Um, and, uh, and now we, we're talking about virtual production, which, um, which was in The Mandalorian. Uh, so if you want to know about virtual production, take a look at that. Um, we're starting to do research in, in virtual production too. 
uh, here are some of our partners that we are working with uh, to, uh, in, in that technology. Uh, most of them are cam uh, camera manufacturers uh, and uh, some different software um, manufacturers as well. And then the last uh, section is our research and media effects section. And this is where we talk um, or we, we do research and that's a broad term because uh, we can do anything from research uh, on uh, cyber sickness, if, if you can see that down there. Um, cyber sickness is something that was happening quite a bit um, in the early ages of uh, virtual reality. And so we did a whole study on that, published a paper uh, that talked about cyber sickness and some of the ways that um, we can combat cyber sickness and make it a little better. And the industry was uh, very receptive to those uh, changes. And as you can see, uh, higher frame rates and um, uh, better resolution has um, allowed uh, VR to um, kind of curb that sickness. Uh, but also we can do uh, research in say uh, genre studies so this would be more like a film theory breakdown where you're watching films and you're giving criticism um, and uh, based on uh, theory and other authors and published papers, things like that. So it's more of your traditional kind of academic uh, um, uh, reviews. And that is uh, research and media effects. But all three of them together still kind of focus you know, our main focus in all three of those is story. How does the story, um, how is the story being affected and how is it still being told better? And so our focus in our department is really about storytelling. Um, there are some other opportunities for uh, students to uh, work in, uh, or excuse me, live in a, uh, what we call the Fine Arts LLC Learning Living Center. And this is where film students will live with uh, art students, theater students, music students, anybody in the fine arts and uh, in the dorms and they will live there and they're just kind of like-minded people. And so, for example, if you were a film major and you wanted a music person, you could connect with a music person to, um, to score your film, you know, do the music for the film um, or an art person or of course theater for acting. Uh, so these are a bunch of opportunities, but not only that, they also go to different places. Um, they have a lot of fun. Um, as you can see here, they've been to LA, they've been to Chicago. Um, I think even a couple of, couple like a spring break or two ago, they went to uh, England. So there's a lot of opportunities to live in the uh, Fine Arts LLC. Uh, next thing that we have is the Baylor Women of Film. Uh, uh, and though uh, this program has uh, uh, really been awesome, uh, I believe we've been able to make uh, two films. Uh, they have um, been able to create um, two films as well as have hold uh, different uh, Q and A's with guest speakers. Uh, so that's a really great opportunity as well. And I know I'm almost done here. Uh, and I'll get to your questions in just a second. I see them popping up here. Uh, the next thing that we have is Baylor in New York. And this is a great program for uh, juniors and seniors uh, that want to um, kind of finish out their, uh, their time. They, it happens during the semester. So you actually go to New York, you work an internship. We have a uh, professor, Dr. Kikasola, um, up there living in New York, and it is 12 hours. So you will take an internship, you will take classes from him as well as some other adjuncts. Um, and you get to do a whole lot of cool stuff like go to Broadway shows and art museums and, um, and premieres, film festivals, all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, and that is generally juniors and seniors. Uh, if you are, sometimes we have, um, these are some of the internships that those seniors, uh, or excuse me, those people have worked for uh, in New York. We also have some LA uh, internships that we have done. And this is generally for students who um, can work it into their schedule. We don't actually have a program in Los Angeles yet, but um, students can sometimes get online classes and, and then still do an internship in Los Angeles. And these are some of the classes that they have, uh, or excuse me, <laughs> classes. These are some of the um, uh, 
companies that they have worked for. Um, NAB is a uh, National Association of Broadcasters convention and it happens every year in Las Vegas. Uh, uh, faculty members along with several students go and they will work for places like Sony and Tiffin uh, to um, uh, just kind of internship there. And that's a cool way to meet people in different technology uh, because everybody that is a manufacturer for broadcast cameras, anything uh, goes to NAB. And then lastly, I just wanna kind of uh, finish this on the idea of networking and of, of kind of a family. So uh, I have mentioned John Lee Hancock, which was the, the gentleman in the center with the plaid shirt. And uh, he, again, is a Baylor uh, alum uh, and he hired uh, Phil Hartage, who is also a Baylor alum. And, and Phil came through our program and was a, is a first assistant director. So he has worked with Phil on several films. Uh, and then uh, Haley, which is in the middle here, uh, she is a, um, a comm specialist who uh, worked in film and we introduced her to Phil uh, along with Ben Gregory, who is also a Baylor grad. So we have four Baylor grads right there and they're all four working on the highwaymen. And that is kind of what we hope happens every time. We try to put people in the students' lives that they can connect to um, um, and give those uh, opportunities uh, to happen. So I'm going to, and that is, that is it for that. So I will stop sharing and come over here to, um, uh, graphic design, um, a part of the uh, digital media. Um, no, that is, uh, that's an art major. But again, if you want to work with, um, uh, work with somebody in graphic design, um, the LLC is probably a great place to start, um, but or, you know, just contacting with them. Um, as it relates to uh, digital media, oops, we bumped up there. Um, are there any opportunities related to animation or gamification? Uh, so yes, we do have some stuff in uh, uh, for games. The uh, ability to work with the uh, gaming track in the engineering department. Um, there, there no, there's not really uh, classes, but um, there have been opportunities for students that have um, have helped design and storytell. Um, for some of the um, engineering students who are doing games, uh, but we don't have any uh, animation or uh, gaming uh, classes uh, yet, but we are, we definitely want them, absolutely. Um, what kind of jobs do FDM majors pursue after graduating? This is a great question. And, and really, we're talking about media here and storytelling, whether you're storytelling for a commercial or a company or anything. Every um, major company uh, and even smaller companies all have some sort of PR department that works in uh, media. Uh, we don't just teach uh, filmmaking. We are really talking about uh, communicating through, um, uh, through media. And, and that is something that you can do in, in anything. We've had students work uh, for game gaming companies, we've had students work uh, in PR departments for um, uh, applied materials, which is, I don't know why I remember that, but it's just, it's strange, but that's where uh, he worked. He worked for applied materials and he went all over the world recording stuff. We've had students work for, um, uh, of course, traditional uh, filmmaking, um, type stuff, but yeah, so really the sky's the limit on where you wanna work uh, in terms of media because everybody uses media in some way. Um, referring to the yet comment, uh, could an LA program be coming um, to? Yes, absolutely. We are, um, uh, we are trying to design it. Uh, it's kind of logistically, LA is really spread out and trying to get it, New York is, New York, you can kind of get around a little easier. Um, LA is, is a little tougher to, to navigate. So we're gonna have to 
we're still working on it. Um, how successful are Baylor film grad students generally? Um, I think most of them are uh, a fairly, fairly successful. Uh, it is uh, pretty on average with uh, Baylor grads in general. Um, it really depends on how much the student really wants to uh, put themselves out there and, um, and network. Um, how large is the program currently? How many students? Uh, good question. Uh, there are about uh, 200 majors, uh, but that is in that also counts the um, comm specialists and um, uh, uh, business um, me media management. Sorry, I <laughs> had a blank there. Um, is the degree a, a BFA or a BA? It is a BA. Um, and so it is, uh, it is not a BFA, uh, so it's not as rigorous. We, we actually have a pretty open plan. You can kind of customize your BA however you want. If you are more interested in writing, you could just take mostly writing classes for your 18 uh, kind of elective hours. If you're more into cinematography, you could go that way, editing that kind of thing. If you just wanna do genre films and criticism because you wanna do a kind of an academia thing, then that's also a, a possibility. So it is, it's a BA and it's, it's very open. Um, since it's kind of generalized, how uh, can the education get for a specific topic? For example, filmmaking, could I get an in-depth class for my interests? Uh, yes, I kind of um, answered that uh, just before. Uh, yes, the nice thing is, is once you kind of get some of the basics down, the, those 18 required classes, um, um, you really can just choose whatever classes you want to, to fill in of those. Uh, and um, that will, you know, that could be, you know, anything from like, for production, we have like lighting and cinematography and excuse me, uh, directing, short film production. If you wanted to do audio, we have audio, um, we have audio production and sound design. If you wanted to do writing, we have writing for media markets, writing uh, for television, uh, screenwriting and advanced screenwriting. So you, you've kind of got, um, uh, you can kind of make it your own, customized. And will the film and digital media courses be helpful for a student who wants to one day apply to companies such as Cartoon Network. Uh, yes, and this is the this is where I was going to talk about um, briefly the um, the idea of story. Uh, if we're good storytellers and we have created storytellers, whether it is a true story or documentary, or whether we are telling stories uh, that we have made up, um, the idea of story and and technique. Um, kind of go hand in hand. So um, it is not to say that if you don't have any kind of um, specialized equip, um, knowledge. So for example, we have had students that have worked in the, um, in the video game industry uh, who you know, aren't engineers, they aren't programmers, uh, but they know how to tell a story and they know how to direct people. So they know how to direct for uh, voiceover, which also is something heavily into cartoon. So um, those are actors that have to be directed um, and there has to be a story being told. So you don't necessarily have to be an animator uh, to be a cartoon, um, you know, to, to work on the films. Um, but I mean, working for Cartoon Network, Cartoon Network has um, commercials that have to be edited. They have, um, they just, they have the, um, all of the marketing that needs to be done. There's a whole lot of, of work in the media of Cartoon Network that you could, could work on without specifically working on the actual cartoons. So I hope that answered that question. And it seems that there are no more questions unless you have, have anything else. Well, you are quite welcome. Thank you so much too. And 
I absolutely enjoyed uh, and hope to see some of you uh, very soon. You're quite welcome.